Hello, this is Shane Thomas from WeekendHandicapper.com. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects because I feel it's so important to your success as a horse player. It can determine winners from the losers, and that is bankroll management. Bankroll management simply means you have this amount of money that you have specifically set aside to gamble to wager, to invest on horses, on horse races, and that, and this is key, it can't be your rent money, your alimony check, it can't be your social security, heaven forbid, your, your disability check, any of those things. It's money that's not used for living expenses except for the simple fact of entertainment. That money set aside to have a great time at the track or to pursue online if you use ADW uh, online accounts. Okay, so let's get that straight first. Your bankroll is made of other things than your living expenses, your mortgage, your rent, etc. It's specifically used for entertainment that goes, applies always tell people it's like, you know, it's like you pay to play Scrabble or, or solve a crossword puzzle. Imagine you're placing money on those kind of games to try to figure out. Because basically that's what horse racing is. That's why I love it so much is the intellectual challenge of solving a puzzle. All these different kinds of puzzles, week in and week out, day in, day out. And if you're right, you can profit from. So specifically money set aside, other than living expenses, for the purpose of wagering on horse races. That's your bankroll. Now we've got to take it further than that. You have to consistently bet a percentage of that bankroll to be in the game for the long run. As you know from my posts, from my videos, I believe horse racing, if is a long-term passion. It's a passion. Why wouldn't you be in this game for the long run? Because that's what you got to do to succeed. Why wouldn't you want it to be for the long run? You should be playing horses, enjoying horse racing, because you love the horses, you love the, the puzzle solving that it involves. Why wouldn't you want it to, if you're a true fan and a true handicapper, you're, you're invested in it for the long run. It's not a fad, hopefully, if you're a true handicapper. So you have to play the game and such that you're in it for the long run over time because that's how you beat the game. I have full confidence in my ability as a handicapper, as a horse player, that I will pick enough winning wagers over time that keeps me in the black. Yeah, it might dip down and might fluctuate just like stocks or anything else does, but I know over time, over a series of wagers, I'm going to come out ahead. Because, and this is important, this brings me to the focus of today's video about bankroll management. The way I've always played horses as it pertains to bankroll management is I consistently bet two to three percent of my bankroll on each race that I decide to play or each wager that I decide to play. I don't care how much I love a horse. I don't bet more than two or three percent. If I'm not a big fan of the horse, but I think the horse might have a shot he might find a way to get it done. I don't think so, but I have to make the bet because the value is there. It's two to three percent. It doesn't change. Now, I know some handicappers, the more confident they are, the more that the percentage of the bankroll that they bet. And I'm sure people have been successful doing that. I haven't. I hadn't tried it for one. Because um, I'm, for one, more conservative. Two, I've seen people, horse players, that try that and 
they bust, they go bust, they send it all in, oh, they love a horse so much, and something fluky happens. Anybody that watched horse, has watched horse racing enough knows there's crazy stuff that happens in horse racing. Not over time, but every now and then you'll get a crazy head scratch and race where either the pace was not what you planned, a horse stumbled out of the gate, a horse tripped, a horse got in bad traffic scenario, a, a horse bolted and went over the rail, jumped the rail. All kinds of fluky, crazy things can happen in one race. And in that one race, if you're betting half of your bank row, that fluky race, then you're in some dear, uh, serious trouble. If you kind of keep it consistent and you're confident in your skills as a handicapper, then more than likely in the long run, you're going to come out ahead because that two to three percent of your bankroll you bet. And if it was on a fluky race, it doesn't hurt you as much as somebody that sent it all in. Oh my gosh, this is the lock of the century. Let me bet all my bankroll or at least most of it. Then you put yourself in behind the eight ball. So set aside a number, a set amount of funds that specifically goes just to betting on horses. And with that specific amount of money, you bet a consistent amount of your percentage of your bankroll every time that you make a wager. Now, let me say this again. To me, I have two bankrolls. I have one strictly for win bets and two strictly for exotic wagers. The size of those those bankrolls is totally up to you. But whatever it is, I found success in betting a consistent percentage of your bankroll with each of those bankrolls that you have, whether it's win bets or exotic wagers. Now, you, two to three percent might not sound like much, depends on the size of your bankroll. But the key is figure out how to beat the game, how to profit, where you're not like your fellow handicappers, where you have to track, you have to hit the ATM every time you're there because you went broke by race five, or you're online, you're always transferring funds from one, your bank account to your um, ADW account. And believe me, it's a great feeling when you can start the year off January 1st with you deposit some money in and by December, you're still in the game. You're still above water. You're still able to play this great game and you don't have to keep depositing money. It's wonderful. The, the confidence, the pride you get from knowing that you're, you've, kind of beat the game that most people say can't be beat, that it's foolish. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And on top of that, on top of that, you get to enjoy these beautiful animals and all the wonderful people that are involved. Speaking of, just want to say thank you and just want to show my uh, gratitude for all the people I've seen on Twitter, talked to on Twitter, on all the social media. It's, it pleases me so much to see so many great handicappers out there that love the sport for the right reasons, that make intelligent wagering decisions, that love the psychology behind this game that we play, that, that have great angles that they find, that you get to see their winning wagers, their winning tickets, and, and so many people are enjoying this sport. And, and so the... To me, I think the sport's in good hands when I see the, the public being very informed, that love the animals, that care about the sport. It's wonderful. So I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for all the comments that I see on Twitter, the, on my website, through emails at weekendhandicapper.com. So I really appreciate it. And I just want to extend my appreciation and thank you all, too, for, for being fans of horse racing and loving the animals and the, 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 just the intellectual challenge of, of, of this puzzle that we all try to solve a few times a day, every week, on all these different tracks around the country. So horse racing is in great shape with handicappers like you. 
with trainers, with people in the media that report on horse racing, and everybody involved is just, it's great. It pleases me to know that, that people care about horse racing. This video could go on if I keep ex uh, telling my love of this sport and all the people that I've ca came in contact with. But bankroll management is so important to me, I'll probably make more videos on this subject. But for today, again, set aside a set amount of money that's just for wagering on horses that don't affect your living expenses. We don't want anybody out on skid row or losing their disability check, social security, welfare check, anything like that, or getting kicked out on the street because you're, you've got this serious problem. You don't make smart decisions when it comes to wagering on horses. Got your set bankroll for your win bets and your exotic bets. Consistently bet a certain percentage of that. Two to three percent is what I recommend. You might be different. If so, let me know. Leave some comments. Email me. Let me know what percentage you bet, what you find successful, what's your philosophy. But to me, bet two to three percent each time you wager, and you'll be in this game, this beautiful game, for the long run. You can be around all of your fellow handicappers, and you don't have to be the guy that goes to the ATM all the time or ask your buddy for a few bucks to, because you you got this lock your of a pick three or a pick four. Again, bet a consistent percentage of your bankroll. You'll be in this game to enjoy it for the long run. And you too will be a profitable, successful handicapper. Check out weekendhandicapper.com. Happy handicapping. And I look forward to next time. Thank you.